Hi, happy stony Sunday. I'm Coral and this is going to be a really vulnerable video. So please watch with love and care, approach with more curiosity than judgment and just show empathy, please. First things first, it is a stony Sunday, so I will be toking. I have some tropical burst smalls nugs ground up, ready to pack in my roar. I am excited to make this video and really be more transparent about what's been going on with me, but y'all, I am excited and nervous at the same time. Let's get ready to smoke, and I hope that whatever you're doing out there, you're having a very stony Sunday. Cheers. Yeah, I needed that. Yeah. Okay. Let's just like get right into it. I really wanted to make this video for a few years now as I have taken a deep dive into my mental and physical health, but I haven't really known where to begin. So I started with my offline friends and family, and I've been sharing with them different steps along the way to get here. And I'm finally ready to sit down and give some specifics to y'all. It's important to me to make this video for you specifically, because I was benefited so much by the people that also shared their stories. And if something I say can help you, that's really what I want to show up for, as well as I want to give you all the chance to understand me better, to get to know me better, and hopefully have a deeper understanding of what I'm doing and what motivates me and kind of the the full picture of the person that I am rather than just the clips and smoke shots that you might see. I'm going to pack up another bowl and catch all up on the basic history. In high school, I started realizing I had anxiety and depression. Cannabis has absolutely helped me manage those symptoms, but no one really gave me a cause or really like a root reason for anxiety and depression and the symptoms that I was experiencing for years after I first reported them to my loved ones as well as to doctors. Eventually around age 19 was diagnosed with CPTSD. It is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. It is something that it took me quite a few years after getting that diagnosis to really understand that it was real for me because I thought PTSD and CPTSD, I didn't value, I didn't really understand my own trauma enough. I really didn't understand my own experiences enough to understand that that is literally the result and what happened and what I was experiencing as a young adult. I thought it had to be someone with a worse life than me or someone that had it worse than me in some way. But time and time again, as I talk to different doctors and different therapists and different psychiatrists, it just always came back to kind of those big three for quite a few years. Okay, let's take a toke. I don't know why this is so hard for me to talk about online other than just the vulnerability of it all. But here we are, you know, I've shared so much of my life with you. I have shared other medical information because I really value our connection. And I know that so many of us have similar symptoms. So many of us that have connected through my channels or through my posts, we have shared a lot of similar experiences and symptoms. And so I only hope that in sharing the different diagnoses and treatments that I've been getting, I can encourage anyone that is exploring how they can better their own lives to just keep going and definitely keep trying. Okay, let's take this toke and get on to what's going on now. So CPTSD, anxiety and depression was a lot to really think about. However, it still didn't feel like all of my symptoms were being addressed. And I still was really having episodes basically and cycles that I just felt like I couldn't control. So I did like anyone does in 20, 
22 or three, whatever this was. And I started looking on TikTok and other social media networks for more information about the symptoms I was still experiencing. Now, I really want to not only suggest that we connect and definitely explore social groups around the symptoms that we're having so that we can really understand ourselves better. But I am going to warn you, self-diagnosis in some ways can delay better care. And I would use self-diagnosis as a way to be a starting point. For some things, you may never want or need a formal diagnosis. There may be no real benefit. That's something that I've explored with my doctors and talked about with my therapists and psychiatrists. But ultimately, some of the things that I have had formally diagnosed the treatment that then became available was absolutely huge for me. But if I hadn't explored online first and essentially self-diagnosed and brought what I thought I had to the doctors, we wouldn't have made it this far in a few years, which took a lot of work, a few years for real to get here, specifically focused on a couple different diagnoses. But even that is quicker than it would have been if I had just started at square one with the doctor, giving them my symptoms and hoping that they could figure it out on their own. So anxiety and depression were symptoms probably of CPTSD. Along with CPTSD, I'm also autistic. Dun, dun, dun. I think that's not news for anyone that has watched my content from the beginning, especially before it picked up and I started feeling like I had to mask a little bit more and I got really into a strict routine and script. Before that, when I was a lot more myself and I was using the channel and how I wanted to and communicating and sharing the things that I love, I think it's not a surprise to find out I am autistic. It is something that we've been talking about in my Patreon club. I love the chance to be a little bit more vulnerable on a faster schedule over there because they are people that have already told me they care about me and are interested in what's going on with me beyond just a looky-loo watching, which is fine if you are just a looky-loo. But my club members definitely hear what's going on with me as it's happening a little bit more in real time. And then after I've marinated for a while, I'm here to share it with you. So it's kind of the first time I'm sharing this publicly, but finding that out about myself has been huge. It has been so, so helpful. It has had different periods of grieving, maybe hoping that I would get better and realizing with autism, you don't just like get better. That's not a thing. And also really being excited about my own strengths and realizing that my differences aren't things I'd even want to change about myself. It's been a roller coaster, but honestly, understanding that I am autistic has helped me understand so much more of myself and given me so much more self-compassion because I wouldn't judge someone else in my position. And so why have I been judging myself so harshly? It's just something that has really deepened my understanding of my own behavior and helped me dismantle different cycles and routines that I was going through, through the lens of I'm autistic and I'm not just really bad at handling this. I'm not just really bad at life. I haven't just been the only person in the world that can't figure this out. There's actually a lot of people that experience things that are really similar to this and it's because we're autistic and with some accommodations, we can either do the things that we want to do or we can just alter our lives and plans and hopefully live in a way that is more suitable and comfortable. Y'all, I am sweating talking about this with y'all. Ah, okay, I'm going to pack another bong hit because that is what calms me down. Ooh, it's so scary to really like know that I'm going to post this and share this, but it's also so freeing and I'm really excited for the different conversations that hopefully it'll open up with y'all. After I really accepted that about myself and was exploring still why certain routines and cycles were happening over and over again in my life that I could not stop no matter how many accommodations I provided or how loving and caring my husband is, I found the, I don't even know how to get into this. Let's just take a long hit.
each diagnosis or even just identification of my different symptoms on this journey over my life has really helped me understand the next diagnosis. And I think for people that have a perfect slate of health, it can seem like, wow, you have zero to five diagnoses. What is going on? But in reality, a lot of these are commonly aligned and a lot of the diagnoses go together often because of overlaps of behavior and experiences and accommodation needs. So with that said, we're anxiety, depression, CPTSD, autistic, and PMDD. If you don't know what that is, I either envy your life or I would really consider looking into it if I were you and you experience essentially what feels like psychotic breaks every month before your period. I am an only child and I don't have a lot of female influences in my life. Well, I do now. I love that about my life now. I love that about my life now. But I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have a lot of women around that were really honest and vulnerable and talking to me all the time. And so I thought what I was experiencing before my periods was just PMS. And I thought that I was just really bad at handling it. I thought that everyone else somehow managed to not want to unalive themselves every single month or they did and they just were like better at knowing not to. It was so disorienting to experience and so absolutely destructive in every relationship I've ever had. Getting the PMDD diagnosis was not easy. The first doctor I went to speak about it with, I used the wrong word and she ended up like laughing at me and I couldn't even continue the appointment with her because she was so dismissive. I actually had to have my husband call our doctors and explain what his experience has been like and how serious and life-threatening this has been. That finally freed up some availability with the doctors that seem a little more qualified and definitely handle me a lot better. So shout out to Mio having a supporting and loving and adoring partner has made all of the difference in my ability to actually survive and get help. But back to the point at hand, when I did finally get to a doctor that listened to me, even if I used the wrong word once um, and heard me out, She thanked me for giving her so much information, for giving her such a great timeline. She thanked me for speaking so clearly about my symptoms so specifically. And she was immediately like, we will get you medicine for PMDD. Like, you're going to have that tomorrow. It was (laughs) such a relief to get help for PMDD. Every other diagnosis has helped me feel less confused about myself and more understanding. PMDD has actually, that diagnosis and getting treatment for it and medicine for it has actually really improved my overall quality of life in pretty much every way. (laughs) It is just something that I can't say I've had relief from 100% of symptoms. It's not a magic pill that I take or one talk therapy appointment away from being cured, but it is treated now. And it is something that when I experience an episode or experience, I don't know, it's, I try to prevent it overall. It can be suggested to skip periods for months at a time so that you don't experience that week before your period if you have PMDD. So even that alone has minimized the likelihood of an episode happening And then now having a better treatment plan and medicine for during a PMDD episode, it has been, I would say, not only saving my relationships across the board, but it's been life-saving. And it's something that I truly didn't know wasn't normal. Even if you love your life, even if you've gotten everything you've ever wanted in life and you feel like the luckiest girl in the whole world... It's not that easy when you are having a psychotic break, basically. So I really just wanted to share that with y'all. I wanted to be honest and transparent with you because I didn't have people when I was growing up that were honest and transparent with me about a lot of different things. And it's only been because of the internet that I've really 
been able to grow and heal myself and I'm not cured, but I am able to treat myself. So in short, I take a few different medicines and I've never been comfortable giving specifics of medical dosages or anything like that. Even with cannabis, I don't tell you all how much to smoke or when to smoke it. So it wouldn't be something that I'm necessarily going to be sharing the specifics of here, but I really just want y'all to feel confident looking into your own symptoms, taking yourself seriously when you know something hasn't been right, something doesn't seem normal. Hearing that, if that's what you need to hear, it's not normal to go through that when you have your period and getting whatever treatment might benefit you best. I don't ever want to seem like I'm pushing one thing or the other because I really only want what works for you. And I really am just here to share what's working for me. So I'm not a medical expert. I'm a community college dropout and a former waitress, not here to give medical advice, just here to share my life as I have for so long now. Ah, Let's take one more bong hit and we'll wrap it up for this stony Sunday. It felt so, so good to connect. I hope that you have had a really good Sunday. I hope that you are staying high. Also, a bummer note, I didn't have access to a lot of the treatment and care that I'm getting until very recently because I didn't have access to health insurance and health care. So that is something that I really would love to have change in our country. We need universal free health care. I absolutely support that. And so take care of yourself in whatever way is best for you. And that includes your budget. and. Um, Just know that I have a lot of empathy for everyone out there at the different stages in life. Wait, there's one more thing I want to say before I take this final toke, which is if you are someone that is concerned about misdiagnosis or the idea that maybe I have it wrong or something like that, I just want to share a personal story, which is that my mom was the first person to survive the type of cancer that she had in childhood. She knocked that bitch out twice and she was like in medical books because she was the first person to survive that type of cancer. 20 years later, it turns out it wasn't a cancer. The actual disease that she had was reclassified because we have a better understanding of what it is now. And so the medical definition of it has changed. But because she was diagnosed with cancer and given treatment, she survived. So was it a misdiagnosis? possibly because it was diagnosed as a cancer wasn't a cancer as it turns out however knowing her symptoms and getting treated and getting the proper care that she needed ultimately saved her life twice so I just hope that that can kind of give you the mindset that labels may come and go but having a better understanding of yourself is something that will benefit you for the rest of your life cheers have a great stony sunday Stay high, y'all.